So I am uh, really pleased to have the opportunity to give this uh, webinar today. So today we will focus on pluripotent stem cell research and we will go through some fundamentals of cultivation, characterization and differentiation. But let's start with a quick introduction on stem cells. So as you may already know, all stem cells uh, show two key characteristics. On one hand, they have the capacity to self-renewing and produce more of the same cell type. On the other hand, when they are exposed to certain patterning factors, stem cells have the ability of differentiating into many different specialized cell types. This last uh, characteristic can be better explained by the concept of uh, cellular potency. Cell potency, in fact, um, describes the ability of the cells to uh, differentiate into other cell types. And the more cell type a cell can differentiate into, the greater is uh, its potency. In this webinar, we will focus on solution for pluripotent stem cells, PSCs, that are known to be able to differentiate into all the embryonic derivatives. There are mainly uh, two types of PSCs that can be distinguished um, according to their origin. So we have embryonic stem cells that are uh, originally derived uh, from the inner cell mass of a developing embryo, whereas differently induced pluripotent stem cells, iPSCs, are derived from already differentiated somatic cells um, by um, cellular reprogramming. Other than uh, this difference in, uh, in the origin, embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells are actually extremely uh, similar in terms of uh, cultivation, morphology, uh, marker expression, and also experimental handling. Um, also, in, uh, in regard of the differentiation potential, they show similar properties and they can both give rise to cells that derive from the three embryonic lineages, so ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. While uh, working with PSCs, um, there are three me main uh, steps that come into play. If we aim to generate new iPSC lines directly from donors, then uh, the first main task is the reprogramming. Uh, independently, uh, if we work with embryonic or induced pluripotent stem cells, they both need to be uh, cultivated for further expansion. And finally, the key step in PSC research is the differentiation process that allows us to have a functional and appropriate cellular model that we can use then for our experiments. So as you may anticipate, each one of these main steps uh, will require further subtask. So let's start by having a better look to PSC culture. Before going uh, uh, into detail, uh, let's see how PSCs are usually cultivated. So classically, uh, PSCs have been cultured in presence of, uh, of supportive feeder cells, such as, for example, uh, mitotically inactivated mouse embryonic fibroblast that support the growth of PSCs through the secretion of uh, various uh, extracellular molecules. Um, unfortunately, uh, with this type of culture, it is not actually really possible to uh, quantify and qualify the factors that are secreted by the feeders, and therefore it's really difficult to provide a standardized culturing uh, condition in every experiment. So this is the reason why um, feeder-free cultivation system have been developed and uh, are now actually the predominant uh, cultivation system in PSC research. So this type of culturing basically replaced the need of feeder by providing on one side um, a culturing matrix where the cells can adhere uh, and, and lay 
And on the other side, uh, by providing an optimized culture in media that provides the cells with all the nutrients and the factors that would have been secreted by, by the feeder cells. So in the light of it, it's easy to understand how a feeder-free cultivation system should always be preferred. But what to do in case uh, you are still using a feeder co-culture system? Well, there are actually uh, several methods that can be used to switch from a feeder to a feeder-free condition. In fact, um, as you may see here on the left, uh, the removal of the feeder cells can be done, uh, for example, by selective adhesion that takes advantage of the um, preferential adherence of feeders to uncoated culture plates or uh, it can be done by winning off the feeder cells over several passages, or finally, it can be done by magnetic separation. So the first two approaches are time consuming and do not always manage to remove all feeder cells. Whereas in contrast, the magnetic isolation that targets um, feeder specific markers is way faster and simple. For example, here on the right, you may see the flow analysis of PSC cultures before and after removal of the feeder cells. And as you can see, not only you can obtain a highly pure population of pluripotent stem cells, but also the whole procedure uh, takes just about 20 minutes. So clearly, when we have switched to a feeder-free cultivation system, the media that we are going to use uh, needs to have a more robust formulation compared to the one we could use in feeder co-culture. In uh, general, in fact, the propagation of uh, pluripotent stem cells requires a special attention and qualified reagents. In fact, PSCs are very, very sensitive cells, and of course, a robust and stable culture media is a fundamental requisite for a successful culture. A good medium in this case should contain factors that allow the maintenance of a pluripotent phenotype and should not contain any factor that can restrict uh, the cellular phage. Moreover, the uh, formulation needs to be uh, tailored for the PSC metabolism and requirements that are uh, slightly different to the one of differentiated cells. Last but not least, uh, the media needs to have a stable and consistent composition every time. So this allows us not only to control the culturing condition, but also to make sure that they are always optimal. So which cellular features should a good media support? Um, here you may see uh, some data obtained from PSC lines uh, grown in Stemmax IPS Brew XF. So first of all, a good media allows PSC to maintain their typical uh, morphology. Second, a robust media must support and allow the continuous and stable expression of pluripotency associated markers during the culture. By doing so, uh, it also allows the preservation of the cells in a pluripotent state and does not induce a bias in the differentiation capabilities of our line. As just mentioned, PSC culture have actually distinct uh, metabolic demands and do not tolerate uh, very well uh, stress conditions. And this is the reason why media changes have uh, been traditionally performed with a 24-hour interval. But some robust and optimized culture media have the ad additional advantage of allowing a more um, flexible feeding schedule. So for example, here uh, you may see some different feeding strategies that can be adopted when using Stemmax IPS brew. So we can have a classical everyday feeding, or we can have a every other day feeding, or finally, we can have a so-called weekend-free feeding. 
so no feeding for two consecutive days. After some uh, days in culture, uh, PSC will reach confluence and they will need to be splitted in uh, additional culture plates. And as you might already know, uh, splitting the PSC culture is a delicate time point. And of course, specific techniques and reagents are necessary so that we can maintain a, a stable line. In uh, general, it's important to keep in mind that different lines have also different growth kinetics, and therefore the splitting uh, should always be assessed um, by having a look at the cells under a microscope. Generally, uh, we can say that it's a good practice to keep culture uh, in a, in a subconfluent stage where we can still see the colonies uh, being separated uh, among each other clearly. Classical uh, splitting techniques, so for example by trypsin addition, uh, do not work very well with PSCs because the detachment must be really gentle so that we can maintain maximum viability and we can avoid um, spontaneous differentiation. There are different methods uh, to passage PSC culture. So the cut and paste method uh, consists in dividing the PSC colony with a needle um, under a microscope. And actually this method takes uh, kind of a long time and it can be used uh, just if you are working with a low number of culture. Therefore, we generally do not recommend it. The other two methods are actually more suited when working with more than one line uh, at a time and uh, they are generally quicker. So for example, splitting the culture by single cell passaging, so uh, by creating a cell suspension, is advisable when we uh, need to perform a cell counting before seeding or we need to analyze the cells. Uh, these are the um, cases because this is a um, relatively more hard method and therefore is not really well suited for uh, routine passaging. For routine passaging, uh, we advise in fact to use reagents that allow for the so-called uh, cluster passaging. With this method, uh, PSCs are detached from the culture matrix as uh, small aggregates and thus this allows um, the preservation of cell-to-cell -cell contacts that are pivotal in the maintenance of a pluripotent phenotype. How does it work? So here you can see a time course detachment of PSC colonies uh, done using uh, the STEMMAX passaging solution. As you can see, um, after adding the solution, the cells will start to uh, progressively lift from the matrix. After about five minutes, clusters can be completely detached from the matrix by, um, just by pipetting up and down. And if needed, the aggregates can be uh, reduced in uh, smaller pieces by keeping on uh, pipetting up and down. Finally, uh, the cell cluster can be trans transferred and seeded into new culture ware. So, uh, during culture, uh, batches of cells should always be frozen uh, in order to have always some cellular backups. Cryopreservation is not only important as a good laboratory practice, but also for uh, the creation of large uh, repositories and uh, biobanks. Here uh, you can see some advices. So always freeze backup batches of cells at an early passage. Of course, you should always freeze just good quality cells. And finally, the more defined the freezing solution is, the more consistent uh, your thawing efficiency will be. When using a defined freezing solution, in fact, we can expect consistent performances of the PSC culture after thawing. 
Here you may see um, an assessment of cell recovery and viability of uh, PSC lines that were uh, originally frozen in uh, Stemmax cryo brew freezing solution and thawed in Stemmax IPS brew. After thawing, uh, you can see that the cells show a high and reproducible recovery rate as well as viability, and they do not have a drastic alteration in the doubling time. Additionally, uh, you can see here below that the PSC lines retain all their typical characteristics. So we quickly mentioned that the PSC must show some specific characteristic. Let's now look in more in detail what these are and what we mean by uh, the term uh, PSC characterization. So PSC characterization uh, includes all the assays that are usually performed in order to confirm the pluripotency, the quality, the identity, and the safety um, of a pluripotent cell line. And this is a critical point, and a comprehensive characterization is mandatory when establishing new lines and also as a good practice uh, during propagation of already established line. So during PSC characterization, we actually want to assess first if the line has a typical morphology, then if the uh, expression of markers is consistent with the pluripotent state, third, if the line can differentiate into cells that derive from the three embryonic lineages, and finally, if the line has a normal karyotype. When the line passes all these tests, then uh, it can be considered to be a high-quality PSC line. So let's start with the first and actually the easiest uh, feature to assess, so the um, cell and colony morphology. Being a, a PSC, extremely sensitive cells, um, one of the first events that happens when a line loses uh, its, uh, its characteristic is the change in morphology. An optimal PSC line uh, should in fact uh, grow as a homogeneous and uh, monolayer culture, whereas the cell itself uh, presents a scar cytoplasm and it grows tightly packed with other cells, forming uh, uh, colonies that are characterized by having uh, sharp and defined borders. Here on the right, you may see uh, an example of PSC morphology, and we strongly advise to monitor the uh, cellular morphology as often as possible. In fact, uh, if uh, the cells are cultured uh, under suboptimal condition, or they are exposed to environmental stress, or if the line is just not a good quality one, the PSC may go an unwanted uh, spontaneous differentiation. And here you can see the most common signs uh, of alteration in PSC morphology. So uh, starting from the left, you may see an example of uh, um, flat uh, outgrowing of big cells, then an example of a colony that has not really well-defined borders, and finally uh, an example of central differentiation and loss of, uh, of the monolayer growth. So what should we do uh, if we see uh, one of these cases in, uh, in our culture? Well, the best solution would be, of course, to sow a batch of the same line that was frozen uh, at an earlier passage. Unfortunately, uh, we know all that this is not always possible, and therefore an alternative approach can be to perform a positive selection of uh, PSCs by banquetic isolation. In fact, uh, the PSCs that are still uh, expressing uh, stem cell specific markers can be isolated uh, with the magnetic separation. So the cells are harvested and we are going to generate a single cell suspension. 
Then the cells are magnetically labeled, and in this case, the labeling is for a specific PAC marker, TRA160, and allows us to target um, just the cells that we want to, to maintain. These cells are going to be retained in the magnetic fields, and um, after that, they can be eluded from the column, uh, then plated, and then we can start our culture again. As you can see from the uh, plot on the upper part of this slide, um, in this way we can efficiently and quickly remove uh, differentiated cells so that we can uh, generate a pure and homogeneous population of PSCs for subsequent culture or for differentiation. The second characteristic that PSC needs to show is a stable and high expression of intracellular and surface markers that are well known to be associated with a pluripotent phenotype. Uh, the expression can be monitored uh, either by uh, immunofluorescence or by flow cytometry. We generally advise for flow, flow cytometry uh, since this allows not only uh, a qualitative assessment but also quantitative evaluation of your culture. Here um, you may see an example of the assessment of pluripotency marker expression in uh, one uh, IPSC line uh, with our multicolor panel for flow cytometry. So the antibody panel described here um, enables the detection of both uh, surface and intracellular markers. Uh, the percentage of, uh, of the marker expression is then plotted in the matrix below and can help us to quickly assess the phenotype of the line. So as you can see, the line on the left shows high expression, marking red, of pluripotency markers such as CA4, TRA160, SOX2, OC3, whereas it shows uh, a low expression of a differentiation marker in green, and the marker is CD15. Conversely, on the right panel, we can see the expression profile of, dif of uh, differentiated cell line. Let's now uh, move to the assessment of pluripotency. So PSC, by definition, uh, needs to be able to differentiate into cellular types that derive from the three embryonic germ layers, so endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. This property can be assessed uh, in various ways, both in vitro and in vivo. Um, classically, uh, pluripotency has been tested in vivo using the teratoma assay. Teratomas are a um, distinct type of tumors that are made up uh, from uh, uh, several uh, different uh, types of tissue. Uh, in the assay, putative pluripotent stem cells are implanted into an immune-compromised mouse, where they will proliferate and differentiate to form a teratoma, just in the case they are pluripotent. Um, nevertheless, this method is, of course, long and uh, certainly uh, requires ethical approval, and it's not really well suited for assessment uh, in a routine way of your, uh, of your cultures. In these cases, um, the in vitro approach is to be preferred. We have two um, assays that are currently being used. One is the embryoid body uh, formation assay, and the other one is the trilineage differentiation assay. The um, embryoid body assay is based on the fact that high quality PSCs, when grown as a three dimensional aggregate in the absence of a patterning factor, uh, will spontaneously differentiate uh, in cellular types that derive from the three embryonic germ layers. These uh, spherical aggregates actually slightly resemble an embryo, and that's the reason why they are called embryoid bodies. The embryoid bodies are usually initially um, grown in suspension for about two weeks, and then they are plated uh, for about one week. In the first phases, cells are uh, maintained in a culturing media that it's not supplemented with cytokines or small molecules, but it's formulated so that the cell survival 
and the multiplication can uh, can be supported. So, for example, uh, by stem max diff base XF. The final analysis uh, of the expression of the various markers uh, can be done either by flow cytometry or by immunofluorescence. An alternative in vitro test that can be used to quickly assess the pluripotency of a PSC line um, is the trilineage differentiation assay. So this test is, uh, is based on the use of cytokine-containing uh, uh, media that allow the directed differentiation into ectodermal, mesodermal, or endodermal lineages. So if a line is a true PSC line, it will be able to differentiate. Um, here you may see a really schematic protocol uh, for the Stemmax 3 lineage differentiation kit. So basically one PSC clone is plated into three separate wells and each one of them will be fed with a specific media from the kit consistent with one of the three germ layers. Um, already at day seven, as you can see, the cells are ready to be analyzed. Also, in this case, we can uh, um, analyze the assay by classical uh, immunocytochemistry or with flow cytometry. Here, uh, as an example, you can see the assessment that was performed with our reaffinity recombinant uh, antibody panel. The panel consists of two marker combinations uh, for each germ layer and includes both surface and intracellular markers. This is not only a fast readout of the pluripotent potential of a, low, uh, of a line, but uh, it also allows us to better understand if our lines are biased towards the differentiation into one specific lineage. Okay, so now that we saw how to maintain high quality uh, PSCs, uh, we can actually move to the core aspect of, of PSC research, so differentiation. So PSC differentiation is uh, achieved by the sequential addition of patterning factors, so cytokines, small molecules, and so on, in, uh, in a media formulated for the metabolic requirements of that specific cell type. The key factors during PSC differentiation are the combination of patterning factors that we add, their concentration, and of course, the timing. By uh, changing uh, these, uh, these criteria, over the last years, many different protocols have been published to differentiate uh, different cell types, but also to differentiate the same cell type. Although, uh, of course, um, this was aimed to um, establish uh, an optimal reference protocol, this large amount of different possibilities creates problems in terms of uh, experimental reproducibility. In, in fact, the phenotype of the cells that we can obtain with the different protocols might not always be completely comparable. So for example, um, they might be in, uh, in different maturation stages. And also the rate, ratio between cells that were successfully differentiated and cells not differentiated may vary. And this leads to heterogeneous populations that are actually uh, difficult to quantify. So other than being uh, a, a confounding uh, factor for, for the experimental output, the percentage among this population can also additionally vary uh, in each round of differentiation. And this results in a poor experiment to experiment consistency. Therefore, there is an underlying need of solution to improve the differentiation and increase the standardization of, of our PSC differentiation. How can we increase the standardization of differentiation? Well, 
um, the first advice is to opt for ready to use media kit for the differentiation if they are available. This of course reduces operator errors, eliminates uh, inconsistencies that are due to um, lot to lot variation of the of the reagents and of the components, and in general is the, um, the, the creation of the experimental model so that we can have uh, more time to, to focus on the actual experimental application and not just in generating our cellular model. So here is an example of a Xenofree and ready-to-use media kit for the differentiation of PSC-derived uh, cardiomyocytes, uh, the STEMMAX CardioDiff kit XF. In this case, um, no supplemental addition of factors is required and the differentiation is achieved by just mixing the appropriate media and feeding it to the cells. Differentiation with the Stemmax CardioDiff Kit XS uh, takes place uh, just in eight days. So first, uh, the stem cells are seeded as single cells in mesoderm induction medium. Then the um, cardiac fate is induced uh, on day two, and beating cardiomyocytes can already be observed uh, by day six, um, of course, depending on the line. The differentiated cardiomyocytes can be cultured further uh, if they are fed every second day with the stemmax cardiac cultivation medium. After differentiation, um, cells uh, show expression of several cardiomyocyte-specific uh, markers, such as, for example, cardiac T-troponin, as assessed by uh, flow cytometry here and also by immunofluorescence staining. The use of the media kit uh, leads to high efficiency and, more importantly, high experiment-to-experiment -experiment consistency. As you can uh, see here, uh, shown by the graph, where, um, where the percentage of cells positive for cardiac troponin T in different line and experiment has been plotted. But what to do uh, in the case we are still uh, optimizing a differentiation protocol or we cannot uh, use a ready-to-use media kit? Well, uh, we can still limit viability and increase standardization and consistency uh, by, uh, for example, using a ready-made xenofree blank media as base media for the differentiation. Additionally, we of course should use high quality cytokines and uh, small molecules, keeping always in mind to check for their uh, biological activity. Finally, we can use isolation strategies to ensure uh, to have a homogeneous population of differentiated cells. In, uh, in the next slides, we will present each of these uh, topics uh, in detail. So, um, ready to use base media. Uh, with this term, we refer to a medium that does not yet contain cytokines or small molecules for the differentiation, but it has a, a complex composition that helps for uh, uh, cell survival and proliferation. The, um, the base media uh, is then supplemented with different uh, combination of cytokines and small molecules uh, according, of course, uh, um, to the differentiation pathway that we chose. Um, here you may see uh, the results of uh, early differentiation that was obtained by combining different patterning factors with stemmax diff base XF. As you can see, uh, this base media can be used directly without the need of cell adaptation and uh, supports directed differentiation both in protocols with adherent culture and in protocols that pass by a EB stage. So um, how can we be sure to uh, use always the same amount of active cytokine in uh, every differentiation round? Well, we uh, always should assess the biological activity so that this can be maintained constant uh, among the experiment. 
This is because uh, the cytokine-specific biological activity can depend on the vendor and pro on the production lot. This variation, of course, can lead to uh, differentiation where the culture is either over or under uh, saturated. And of course, the good researcher should assess every time that the cytokine activity um, is, uh, is the same, or it should use cytokines where the activity values have already been measured. So for example, with the max premium grade cytokines. Let's now come to the last point to um, increase standardization, that is cell isolation. So as you know, PSC differentiation often uh, leads to a heterogeneous uh, mixture of, uh, of cells. Um, part of them are correctly differentiated and part of them have just uh, a, an atypical phenotype. Having a uh, homogeneous population is, of course, extremely uh, important so that we can have a reliable uh, result uh, in our experiment and, of course, measure the response just from the correct uh, target cells. By enriching the target cell population, we can control the percentage of PSC-derived cells uh, so that is consistent uh, among various experiments. Why is this important? Well, let's see this example on uh, hepatocytes differentiation. So the uh, cellular types descending from the endodermal uh, lineage will pass through an intermediate state that is known as definitive uh, endoderm. This initial patterning um, can be done in vitro by the addition of specific cytokine, such as, for example, activin A. Then the sequential addition of other cytokines and small molecules will allow us for the uh, terminal differentiation. During the differentiation, uh, we evaluated the percentage of cells that were expressing uh, um, definitive endoderm markers, uh, such as uh, FOXA2, uh, SOX17, and uh, CXCR4. And what we saw was that already at this uh, um, intermediate stage, the cells actually resemble a heterogeneous population. As you can see from the uh, flow data, in fact, just uh, about a half of the cells population does not express um, definitive endoderm markers. It's, uh, it's kind of clear that this will, of course, further uh, reduce the success of our downstream differentiation into, for example, hepatic cells. Therefore, uh, we modified the original protocol by including an isolation step for the definitive endoderm by using the CD184 microbit kit. Let's see how this has an impact on the final population. So by comparing the expression of uh, hepatocytes markers in cells obtained without and with isolation step, it's clear that the letter uh, shows a higher expression of hepatocytes marker. Importantly, um, of course, the same isolation strategy can be used also for the other cell types that uh, derive from uh, the definitive endoderm. So we are now at the end of this webinar, and we saw how uh, pluripotent stem cells are very sensitive cells and appropriate cell culture regions and handling uh, are, of course, key factors in maintaining your cells at their best. Moreover, we highlighted how PSC characterization should always be performed both after reprogramming, but also as routine practice in maintenance culture. Finally, we showed uh, several different strategies that can be used to increase the standardization during PSC differentiation. And with this, I would like to thank you all for your attention.